Well, good Tuesday morning to you. How are you? I pray that all is well with you. It is me, Tamika Gilbert, and I am your host on From Behind the Veil with Tamika. And I am so, so excited um, to be with you on today. Well, ladies, we are in um, our series, the Healing Journey series. And and today we are going to talk about um, lessons learned. This is actually part four of our series, and it is going to conclude our series on today. For those of you um, who are joining me live, I want to definitely say welcome to those of you who are joining me and replaying this, um, or maybe someone downloaded it and you are listening to it. I want to say thank you for joining me as well. I am really, really excited and encouraged um, by by this series because, you know, I promised the Lord that when I went through the process of healing, that I didn't want anything to be wasted. You know, the tears, the nights where, you know, I had to sit up and I was like, Lord, just talking to him and allowing him to talk to me. I didn't want any of that time to be wasted. But not only that, the lessons that I learned while walking the journey, I wanted to be able to encourage and to share with other women, no matter what it is that you need healing from. Maybe it's not a relational wound. Maybe it's an emotional wounding, or maybe it's a spiritual wounding, or maybe it's something that's come about as a result of, um, you know, decisions that you have made that weren't the best or the greatest decisions and you've had to to learn some lessons or you've had to redo some things. You know, I want to encourage you because in this life, you know, we're all going to have those times. We're all going to have those moments when we are going to have to heal and we're going to be in need of healing. And ladies, you know, I know for me, during those times, I would go through a whole bunch of different thoughts and a whole bunch of emotions. But I learned that, you know what? It's okay to be in the position to need to heal. No, it doesn't feel good. You know, but healing is necessary because we're, again, we're all going to have to heal from something. And with this series, you know, my goal, my desire has been that we would not glorify whatever the pain is, whatever the trauma is, whatever the situation or the circumstances, that we're not going to glorify it. Instead, we are going to glorify God in the midst of it. Instead, we are going to look to God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And because he is perfecting us, even in the healing process, you know, uh, two weeks ago, I talked about the benefits of healing. You know, and there are some great, great, great benefits walking the healing journey. Number one, it's recognizing that God is so for us and that he is with us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today because it is a lesson that I learned in the healing journey. And, you know, there's three things that I want. I really want to bring out. There are so many lessons that we learn because, again, like you, um, I've had to, to experience healing in different areas. I've needed healing spiritually. I've needed healing emotionally. I've needed healing physically. I needed healing in the midst of some relationships. I even needed healing in my relationship with God. Being real with you, you know, because there were some things, some circumstances, some things that I created myself that I found myself looking at God and being like, you know, what's up? What's the deal? And through his love and through his compassion and his ability to to speak and me allowing him to speak to me regarding circumstances, even circumstances that I created. You know, there was a time in my life when I loved to blame everybody else for things that were going on in my life. But God, because of his love and him shining the light on me, helping me to see me. I was able to see, oh, wait a minute. You know, other people may have played a part, but Tanika, you have some responsibility here too. And with God allowing me to see that and then me allowing him to come right in the midst of it, 
and to work on me and to improve me, to work on my character, to work on my mindset, to renew my mind and, and to renew my heart. You know, these are these are benefits of healing and they're also lessons that I had to learn. So ladies, we're going to dive right in. I want to enjoy you and not enjoy, but encourage you rather to get your coffee, to get your tea if you don't already have it. Um, and also, you know, get your notebook, get your Bible, because we are going to be talking about some things on today. And really, I just want to be an encouragement to you. I want to be an encouragement. I want to share, you know, if, if you can learn from the things that I experienced, even the, I don't want to say not so great lessons because that's not necessarily true. But even if you can learn from, from the redos that I had to do, you know, some of our lessons, yeah, we have to repeat just like we're in school, you know, when you take the test and and if you don't hit a certain mark, the teacher allows you to take the test over. So grateful that our God allows us, you know, when we don't, when we don't pass it, you know, we know that it's going to come around again, but he teaches us things. And, and when we look at the lessons that we learned, we set ourselves up to pass the test. You know, God teaches us many things. We have to be willing students. We've got to be a participant in the process. So on today, we're going to talk about lessons learned in the healing journey. Now, these lessons, the three points that I'm going to share with you today, you know, although my first point, my second point and my third point, I'm going to share them. I'm not putting weight on them, meaning that one is greater than the other. These are just three very valuable lessons, you know, that I learned in the healing journey, in this healing process. The first one I'm going to talk about is strength and weakness. You know, this was a, this was a a very important lesson because initially I had this, um, preconception of what, you know, strength was going to look like. And I, I thought that I had to be strong through it all. I didn't think that I could cry with people or in front of people. I even tried to hold back my emotions from God, you know, like he didn't see. I had convinced myself that, you know, he didn't care and nothing could have been further from the truth. Now, I know that we oftentimes, you know, we can quote the scripture. My strength is made perfect in his weakness. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. But ladies, I had to take that to heart. And what I had to come to recognize, and I'm wondering if if maybe you find yourself in that place now when you're not seeing your strength because you're considering yourself as weak, or maybe somebody has said to you in this healing journey, you know, you need to be stronger than that. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. And the reason why I say rebuke it is because of the fact that it takes strength to say, God, here I am in this place. It takes strength to say, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I need you to meet me here. I need you to meet me in this place of pain or this pa- this place of discouragement, this place of uncertainty, especially, you know, when we're not sure of the outcome. Or sometimes not even know what we want the outcome to be. And when we're uncertain, when we're unsure, that can falsely render us in our own minds and even in the minds and eyesight of others as being weak. But ladies, I want to encourage you on today to recognize this. If you find yourself in that moment or you have a friend or a sister or a coworker or anyone who finds themselves in that moment and they're speaking such things as, you know, I'm so weak. Meaning that I, I'm, I'm not a strong person. I can't endure this. I, I can't see my way through this. I can't walk this journey. Encourage them to rebuke it. Encourage them to rebuke it. And say to them, I'm sorry about that. And say to them, you know what? 
The very fact that you could admit that to me, that shows your strength. I'm reminded of the song that Whitney Houston sang. And it was um, after she had, you know, gone through the very public divorce with Bobby Brown. And I'm not talking about anybody or their situations because I don't know her. Um, But this is what she said on an interview with Oprah Winfrey. Through all of that, she didn't recognize how strong she was to come through it. And ladies, I say to this, whatever it is that you have had to endure, whatever the circumstance, the test, the trial is that has got you to the place where you're thinking that you're not strong or you're not recognizing, you know, how you're going to get through it. The very fact that you're here today is a sign of strength. And and I love what she said. She said that God enabled her to look back at everything. And for her, from her own, from her own words, the drug addiction. Not not recognizing who she was. You know, when God enabled her to see, wait a minute. That was that day. That was that week. That was that month. But look at where you are today. It took strength to work through that. And my sister, for you to get from yesterday or even yesteryear to this day, to this very day, for you to get here, that took strength. It took you facing things. Oh, yes. To get up in the morning. That takes strength to face the day that takes strength. And she wasn't giving herself credit for it until God really opened up her eyes and let her see, you know, that took strength. And even to come to me and to admit, God, this is where I am. God, I don't feel like doing this. God, I I don't know how I'm going to do this. And in all honesty, there were times when I was like, God, can you do this for me? Can you get me through this hour? Can you get me through these 15 minutes? Can you get me through this day? It took strength to verbalize that to him. It took strength, ladies, for me to seek counseling. It took strength for me to get into my word. It took strength for me to pray. In all honesty, there were some days and there were some nights I didn't feel like it, but it took strength to go beyond what I felt. And ladies, you have done that. Even in times of feeling weak, God enabled you to gird up. Even when you couldn't see it, you were yet doing it. Sometimes we're like, and they say that hindsight is twenty twenty. To look back and say, oh, wow, God. In that weak moment, it wasn't because of me that I got through it. It wasn't because of me that I got through that day. You enabled me, whether it was a word that you spoke, a scripture that I read, a song that I heard, or someone calling me or texting me or emailing me. And telling me I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Even in this present day. You know, God is equipping you and he's equipping me with strength for this journey. So it's okay when when you don't know your own strength. Because you won't take the credit for it. You'll give the credit where credit is due and that's to God. And that's why. You know, for me, when, when Paul says, you know, that he counts it all joy. That that's for me, that's where I get it. Now, counting it all joy doesn't mean that it's going to feel good or that it's going to look good. But it's a it's a mindset. It's a place of believing that in the midst of this, because God is with me and he is for me, I can be weak because when I'm weak. I'm not going to try to be in control. I'm going to let God control this journey. I'm going to let him order my steps. This is a lesson that I learned about strength and weakness. 
that even though I'm feeling weak, (laughs) I really am strong. And then my sister, even if you're feeling weak, ask God to show you strength, his strength and trust his strength. Trust his strength. Another lesson that I learned was how to hear God in different ways. You know, for a very long time in my walk with him, in my relationship with him, I depended on God speaking to me in a certain way. It was oftentimes through song. You know, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the ways that, that I can really get direction from God. And it's through, through song, through my worship in song with him. Well, for a a season, ladies, in my healing journey, that wasn't the case. God wasn't speaking to me through songs at all. And as a result of that, what I began to believe was that God was silent in the midst of my circumstance, that he didn't have anything to say. There were times when I really thought he didn't want to say anything. Again, nothing could have been further from the truth. In reality, this is what was going on. God was teaching me to hear him in different ways. You know, God is not going to be like we humans tend to be when we shout and we scream and we yell and we become emphatic. He's going to speak most often in that still small voice. And when we're in the midst of our challenge, when we're in the midst of our circumstance, because he's whispering, he's whispering. We don't hear the still small voice. And why don't we hear it? We don't hear it because of the loudness or the noise of our own thoughts. Or we don't hear it because we're not still. Last week, God interrupted (laughs) the flow of this and had me speak on something different. You know, and I talked about that secret place and I, I invite you really go back and listen to this entire series, especially listen to last week's just a word of encouragement. You know, I, I wasn't seeing or I wasn't hearing how God was speaking but it was a still small voice, but I couldn't hear it because of the loudness again of my own thoughts, the loudness of the circumstances, the loudness of other people being in my ear. I gave them space to be louder than God. And I'm wondering if you find yourself today, like I can't hear God. Why isn't he speaking? I want to, Suggest this to you. He is. However, is something louder than his voice to you? And if it is, what is that? And ask God to help you silence it. Circumstances. Our own thoughts, the enemy's voice becomes loud to us. And when those things happen, please see it as a sign that God is speaking and he needs you to hear something. He needs you to hear something. There's something that he wants to say. There's something that he is saying. But you have to take control of the volume of what's going on in your life. Now you might be saying, Tanika, how do I do that? Number one, you got to get to a still place. You got to begin to shift your focus. Stop thinking on the situation. It doesn't mean that it immediately goes away, but this is what I do mean. God, I need to hear you. I want to hear you. So I'm asking you to renew my mind. I'm asking you to renew my thoughts. I'm even asking you to silence the wind. Because you can speak to the wind and the waves. 
and they have to obey. They have, they have to obey. And so God, um, I'm imploring you to speak to the wind because the wind controls the waves. And be still and be patient. But have the expectation that God is speaking and that you are going to hear and that you are going to hear clearly. Have that expectation. And allow God to speak. Now, again, I said earlier that, you know, I looked for God because that's how he had spoken to me and so much through song. And so he chose not to do that. And here's another lesson that I learned in the midst of this one. It was good that he chose not to speak to me in a familiar way. Because then I would expect a familiar message. And our God is a, it's a vast God. He is almighty. He is the great I am. And so why would we box him in? Why would he, we limit him to speaking in only one way with one message? And so I had to not only learn that God will speak to me in different ways, but the way he delivered the message wasn't going to be the same. And because I had that belief that God, you know, you speak to me in song. So give me a song. Let me hear you in this song. But he chose other ways. Sometimes it was him waking me up early in the morning. There was a season, ladies, through multiple healing, (laughs) healing journeys that I have taken. When he would, he would wake me up one, two o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it was five o'clock. I know for two months straight, I woke up at 5 a.m. for two months straight. I don't mean five days a week out of the two months. I mean, seven days a week. And sometimes I would sit there and I would just hear God say, rest in me. Sometimes I would sit there and I would hear him. Speak his word. Sometimes I would sit there and all he would say is be still. Sometimes he would just say, I'm with you. And I got more out of those times. In that season. Because it didn't take him saying much. It was just the very fact that he spoke. The very fact that he spoke. There were other times. And and I'm very, very mindful of, of allowing people to speak over me. And to speak to me. Because if it doesn't line up with the word of God, I rebuke it instantly. And in fact, I've even told people, you can stop talking because it doesn't bear witness. Oh, yeah, I've done that. Because I'm not going to allow people to speak into me or speak over me. Something that's going to hinder me. But God would send people. With a word and, and, and what they would do is they would speak something that I had been praying to him about, you know, asking God questions, asking for greater understanding, asking for clarification. And it wasn't every day, so I don't want to paint that picture. But it will be it, at the times when I needed it the most. I I remember one Sunday going to church and before I left my home, I was like, God, you know, I'm going to your house and I'm going to worship you and I'm going to meet you there. 
I need you to speak to me. And it wasn't the message that my pastor at that time brought forth. I was actually in the bathroom. When, when a fellow believer walked up to me and she said to me, this doesn't make sense to you, to me, but God told me to tell you, he heard you. And then she said something else. And it was a a specific question that I had asked God that very morning. Now, what would have happened, ladies, if I had a blocked God into this? Okay, God, it's got to come from, you know, the preacher. It's, it's got to come from this. You got to be open to the many ways in which God is able to speak and learning how he speaks to you. Now, I want you to be mindful of this because, you know, sharing our testimonies is great. That's how we overcome. Be mindful of this. Because God speaks to your sister a certain way. And maybe you have similar circumstances. You go, oh, that's how he spoke to her. So God, I know you're going to speak to me that way. Don't box God in like that. And don't set yourself up. Because if that's not the way that he chooses to speak, he won't. He's God like that. He's God like that. He's going to speak the way that he needs to speak to you. Because my sister, we all hear differently. We all learn differently. And God is such a great God that he's fully aware of this. And so allow him to speak the way that he needs to speak, which also means this. And ladies, I've shared this before. You know, I like to be in control. And this is what I mean. I like to know. I I like to know A from A to Z. I like to know it. But in God speaking to me, I also learned this. Sometimes he shares on a needs to know basis. And this is still in, you know, me thinking that, you know, God is silent or that, you know, he's not sharing everything. It was good for me that he didn't share everything at one time. It would overwhelm me. And he knows that. So he gives us what we need to know when we need to know it and how we need to know it. And again, it doesn't mean that he's silent. You know, for everything, there is a season. (laughs) There is a time to be quiet. That's for us. But God is also a, such a loving God that he is not going to shout at us. He is, he is not going to scream and holler at us. So when we're, when we're doing that, I call it adult temper tantrums. And Lord knows I had some. Lord knows I did. He is not going to scream over our tantrum tantrum moment. He's not. Instead, he's going to wait. God is not silent. He is speaking in so many ways. Sometimes I could be so exhausted, even in my present, my present journey that I'm walking. One of the ways that God speaks to me and lets me know that I'm not bearing this load alone. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. (laughs) Thank you, God. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And it's there that he speaks to me. Even if he's just wooing me and saying rest. Even if he enables me to go to sleep. God 
God's not silent like we think. The many ways in which he speaks. I, I want to encourage you. Learn the ways in which he speaks because he speaks in many different ways. Consider some ways that God has spoken to you. And I encourage you, journal them, write them down, keep them before you so that you can see the ways in which he does speak so that you can begin at at times when the enemy or your own thoughts will begin to say, God, God has nothing to say to you. He's not talking to you. You can hold this up and say, no, these are all the ways in which God has spoken to me before. And no, I may not know the way that he's going to speak to me today, but I know he's going to speak. I saw an eagle. To me, that was God speaking. Because I had been asking him. God, help me to rise above Help me to soar above this. And eagles don't fly. They soar. And right after that had come out my mouth, I saw an eagle. What was that? To me, that was God speaking. Showing me you're going to soar. You are soaring. God speaks in so many ways. He's not silent. The very fact that he enables you to do something or to even not do something, that's him speaking. The third thing I want to share with you today is that God is faithful even when we are not. There are times in the journey where I haven't prayed. I haven't gotten in his word. I've allowed life to speak to me. I've allowed life to become my focus. But yet God was faithful. Saying, I'm not leaving you. I haven't left you. I have not forgotten you. Where are you? And I say to you today, my sister, God is faithful. Don't do like I did and be like, God, I've always got to see you. I've always got to hear you. You need to always show up at this time and in this way. And if he didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it, I would quote unquote lose faith. God is not like us. He does not walk away. He does not. And I had to check myself because when I accused him of that, when I accused him of not being present and he lovingly showed me how he is, not was, but is always. I'm reminded of Job. When when he had to ask Job the question, where were you (laughs) when I created And God had to ask that question of me. And I had to be honest. God, it wasn't me who walked, of you rather, who walked, but it was me. And I walked when I thought that I could handle it a better way. I walked away when I thought that I knew best, when I knew what to do. And God, because he doesn't force himself on us, says, you know what? I'm going to be right here when you come to yourself. I'm going to be right here. Right where you walked away. Because he was saying to me, I never left. And I'm going to ask you, my sister, have you walked? Are you trying to do this in your own way? Trying to bring about solution? And saying to God, I've got to do this, Lord, because you aren't moving. Mm. Let's get really honest with ourselves. 
Let's get really honest with ourselves so we can see his faithfulness. The enemy doesn't want you to see it. He wants you to believe that God is not concerned or that he doesn't care or that he isn't there. Pretty much so that you can destroy things. God is faithful. He doesn't leave us. We walk. But here's the good thing. God allows you turns. We can turn around and walk back to him. Peter did it. Jonah did it. Tanika did it. So many others. God is faithful. And he promised you. Go back to the other message, the benefits of healing. There are some very specific promises that I speak of. God has promised us things through our healing journey. Shows his faithfulness. Remember, ladies, his word is not going to return unto him void. Now, notice I said his word. His word. It's not going to return unto him void. God is faithful. And his faithfulness is not predicated on how we feel. Please don't let the enemy allow that to to take a stronghold in your thought and in your sight. God's faithfulness is not predicated, predicated rather upon our feelings. In spite of how we feel, God is faithful. In spite of how we think, God is faithful. In spite of how we behave, God is faithful. Ladies, my sister, my friend, take these lessons, learn them, teach them to others. Spend some time with God. Seeing the ways and the lessons that he has been teaching you through your own experience. There's nothing wrong, ladies, with going back and learning. You know, I still have notebooks from when I was in grad school that I refer to when I'm working with individuals or even when when I'm experiencing something, you know, or I need to to remind myself of something. I go back to those notebooks. Because we need a refresher. We can't remember it all. That's why for me, it's so important to journal. And I encourage you to journal the lessons that you are learning. Even when you've got to repeat some things. Because there's always a lesson in that lesson. I encourage you on today. Know that God is faithful. Know that his strength in your weakness is trustworthy. And that even though you may feel weak, doesn't mean you are weak. And know that God is never silent. He's always speaking. Maybe not in the way you would like him to, but he's yet speaking. And when he speaks, he comes with such a mighty word. And his word can be trusted because it will not return unto him void. May you be blessed on today. May you take hold 
of the lessons that God is teaching you and enabling you to learn and recognize you're learning them for a reason. It's not to harm you. It's not to kill you. Through these lessons, you are going to become empowered. Through these lessons, your relationship with God and yourself and even others is going to move in the direction that it needs to be moved in. May you be encouraged on today. May God bless you and may he keep you. I look forward to being able to speak with you once again on next Tuesday. Have a wonderful day.